There was once a script titled Spaceman from Pluto about a young man who got his hands on some high-tech machinery and made everything better and worse at the same time. Throughout time, that script would be later retitled Back to the Future, and the fellow who wrote and directed that is named Robert Zemeckis. A man who got his hands on some high-tech machinery and made everything better and worse at the same time, throughout time. This talented filmmaker is a wizard of special effects and a master of storytelling. Robert Zemeckis, his friends call him Bob, made a career of worlds that would seamlessly combine heartwarming, adventurous stories with groundbreaking technology. The things that Robert Zemeckis was able to put on the screen were impossible and improbable. Yet good old Bobby Z was able to make it all happen. Robert Zemeckis embraces new technology like almost no other director, and then took it to extremes that turned off viewers and critics. And now it seems like this man who brought us masterpiece after masterpiece has just been reduced to a joke in that Rescue Rangers movie. So let's find out what the f happened to Robert Zemeckis. But to truly understand what the f happened to Robert Zemeckis, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1951, Chicago. As a child, he made short little 8mm films, and this cinematic passion led him to USC's School of Cinematic Arts. Zemeckis won a Student Academy Award for a short called A Field of Honor, which is actually quite entertaining, through its compositions and light humor, two hallmarks of Bob's work. That student film caught the eye of a baseball cap wearing director named Steven Spielberg. Somehow, young Robert Zemeckis found his way into Steven Spielberg's office and forced him to watch this short film. Cause that's how you make it in show business. <laughs> Zemeckis' debut was 1978's I Wanna Hold Your Hand about crazy Beatles fans. It was executive produced by Spielberg, as was the film Used Cars, in 1980, thus bringing on a partnership that goes hand in hand with innovative filmmaking and technological advances. But Zemeckis was far from hot. He was even booted from directing the movie Cocoon after lousy early tests. But good old Bobby Boy, was given one more shot with an action-adventure romantic comedy blockbuster called Romancing the Stone in 1984. And this was the hit that his career needed. On set, he and co-star Kathleen Turner butted heads over his elaborate camera setups. And you know what? Come to think of it, Robert Zemeckis doesn't exactly come across as a um, people person. And hey, you know who won't complain about camera setups? a computer-generated Jim Carrey, but more on that later. <laughs> and the success of Romancing the Stone gave Robert Zemeckis the clout to direct his passion project. You know, that screenplay called Spaceman from Pluto that we all know as Back to the Future, which had a troubled production. At first, the original actor, Eric Stoltz, was just not right for the role. So after quite a bit of shooting, he was fired. And they had to reshoot all this stuff with Michael J. Fox, who was out on loan from Family Ties. But in the end, it was all worth it because this led to one of the most beloved trilogies ever. Back to the Future has it all. Science fiction wonder, hilarious comedy, suspenseful action, romance, some of which is awkward, but it allows the audience to ask questions about time and how time can affect us all, because it's all the time all the time. Back to the Future was the first Robert Zemeckis movie to win an Oscar for Best Visual Effects. Well deserved. The effects still hold up even now in the future. Yeah. 
And then came not just Bob's greatest feat up to that point, or really any point, but one of the most remarkable, awe-inspiring achievements in movie history. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Live action and animation had been done before, but the task at hand for Who Framed Roger Rabbit simply seemed impossible. The entire movie would have real live famous human actors, not just talking to animated woodland creatures and Jessica Rabbit, but interacting with these animated characters in ways that had never been done before. The cast and crew were so dedicated to bringing authenticity to this cartoon that they did whatever it took, even driving poor Bob Hoskins crazy to the point where he was actually hallucinating rabbits. But it's all worth it because cinema. But yeah, these characters, they would interact. They would have romantic connections and physical acts of violence would occur between these two, human and cartoon winning one of the most deserved best visual effects Oscars ever. And Bob again worked with Kathleen Turner, and I guess they got along better than they did on Romancing the Stone because you know what, she's not bad. She's just drawn that way. Then Bob jumped back to back, back into Back to the Future, with Back to the Future 2, which was set in the future and the 50s again, and Back to the Future 3, which was set in the Old West. A lot of people don't like that part three is a Western. They give it a lot of shite, but I think it's the perfect setting to end the franchise. It's exactly 100 years in their past, which is a nice round number. It's far enough in the past to feel epic, and at the same time, it's not far enough in the past that their actions won't affect their present. But yeah, these sequels, they're great. Not perfect, but lots of fun. They do what sequels need to do. Build off of the original, but become their own thing while respecting, you know, the mythos and tone of part one. Nowadays, it feels like sequels just suck the life out of the franchise. But I don't really feel that way with BTTF even though it does have its flaws. We have been truly blessed with a wonderful franchise, which spawned an animated series and a badass ride at Universal Studios, which now you need a time machine to go do because it's a thing of the past. In the 1990s, Bob began another experimentational phase in his career. With 1992's Death Becomes Her, that continued the tradition that would see Robert Zemeckis movies winning best visual effects at the Oscars. Take that, Alien 3. Many people think Death Becomes Her is a middle-of-the-road dramedy that doesn't exactly make audiences' heads spin, but funny enough, it seems to have only gotten better with time. Like those lady characters in the movie. And then Robert Zemeckis went all in with Forrest Gump. And yes, this is sappy, sentimental Oscar bait. And it totally worked because it won a lot of Oscars. This was another one of Bob's movies to win Best Special Effects at the Oscars. Take that, The Mask. And yeah, Forrest Gump's special effects, they stand out. Because they don't stand out. Of course, Mr. Gump did not meet Kennedy or LBJ or John Lennon, but incorporating him into those scenes with those icons, it seems so natural, kinda, sometimes. And yes, while we're here, Forrest Gump should not have beaten Pulp Fiction or Shawshank Redemption, or really any of the other movies nominated for Best Picture that year, but it was still nice to see, because, you know, this movie, it's a pop cultural phenomenon, and it has its nice moments. Alex, your father just won the Academy Award. Robert Zemeckis for Forrest Gump. At this moment in his career, Robert Zemeckis was at the top of the world. So he went out of it with contact. It asks interesting questions about life beyond the earth and life beyond death and stuff like that. But contact does lack a certain lightness and heart that his other movies have. 
but in Contact it does seem like he's focusing more on the drama this time, making this sort of a transition movie for him. Then came the movie Cast Away, starring a skinny Tom Hanks in a volleyball, and a chubby Tom Hanks in a plane crash. Robert Zemeckis gave Tom Hanks six months to lose weight to play the Robinson Crusoe side of his character, and during these six months, while Tom Hanks was starving himself and not shaving, Robert Zemeckis went and made another movie, a pretty decent Hitchcockian wannabe called What Lies Beneath, starring Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. So yeah, he shot this movie and then he went right back to Cast Away, shooting all the skinny stuff. And apparently it was very frustrating for Bob to have to wait for a real-life human like Tom Hanks to lose weight. He was just like, why can't a computer make him lose weight? So it seems like it was kind of this moment where he went from that deserted island to the uncanny valley. Wilson! And here's where Robert Zemeckis pulls a, well, a, a Robert Zemeckis. He spoke out against directors who strictly use film to make their movies. You know, the, the celluloid stuff. Mr. Zemeckis said, Film as we have traditionally thought of is going to be different. But the continuum is man's desire to tell stories around the campfire. The only thing that keeps changing is the campfire. Yeah, a new campfire that's digital, played by Tom Hanks covered in ping pong balls. So yeah, now Robert would wait for no man. He was now working with the computer creatures. These images would come directly from his head, his imagination, just as they did when he was toying around with his 8mm camera as a child. But his eyes probably looked more real when he was a real child. Zemeckis was again embracing technology for his cinematic endeavors, but to a major fault. The Polar Express was released in the year 2004, and is 100% motion capture, complete with the dead eyes, the inorganic movements, and speech. He accidentally made animation too realistic and too fake at the same time. It's like undescribable. It's like you threw up a nightmare all over your computer. So we started to learn that this supreme level of Zemeckis power had its limits. But freaky looking or not, Disney seemed to believe in the Robert Zemeckis hype, setting up image movers, which would focus on motion capture movies which brought us Beowulf in 2007, and A Christmas Carol in 2009. Robert Zemeckis, like us, barely even talks about Beowulf, because I'm sure he's embarrassed. And its obscene $150 million budget was a terrible disappointment at the box office. And that Christmas Carol movie adds absolutely zero to the character, or the story, which we've all heard a million times, and it does nothing to make me like or appreciate motion capture. I'm sorry. Jim Carrey could have done all of this with prosthetics, and, you know, it would have felt real. But instead, Robert Zemeckis decided to piss away a budget that is reported to be up to 200 million buckaroos. Yikes. God bless us, everyone! Then it would all come tumbling down, and Robert Zemeckis gave it one more go as a producer for the movie Mars Needs Moms. It was a monumental flop, and it lost at least $100 million. Image movers shut down, and nearly 500 people lost their jobs. That show business. This also put so many Robert Zemeckis movies on hold, including Who Framed Roger Rabbit 2 and a new spin on the Beatles' Yellow Submarine, robbing Zemeckis of the chance to bring his career full circle. You know, because Beatles. His first movie was I Want to Hold Your Hand. And so he entered yet another phase. I like to call this one the dramas. We got 2012's Flight, and Robert Zemeckis was able to direct a top-tier Oscar-nominated performance from Denzel Washington. 
This character-driven drama forced Robert Zemeckis to focus on real people. And another passion of his, flying. Bobby Boy is a licensed pilot, actually. And yeah, even though Flight is one of his more grounded movies, not as many special effects, it's more character-driven drama, but it does have an absolutely thrilling, suspenseful, spectacular plane crash sequence. Yeah, Flight. I think this was his last good movie, actually. Depending on if you like his next movie, The Walk, which came out in 2015. This is a true story that was shot in 3D, the third dimension. The epic spectacle of The Walk and the uneasy presence of the Twin Towers kind of ended up taking away from the central character. Then again, so did Joseph Gordon-Levitt's ridiculous accent. And then he directed a Brad Pitt movie called Allied in 2016, which I totally forgot even existed. This later batch of Robert Zemeckis' films, they were mostly fine yet unremarkable and sent Robert Zemeckis back into the sandbox of his mind. Brace for impact. And there he went big, well, small, really, with the film Welcome to Marwin in 2018. Very, very, very loosely based on a true story about a man who creates tiny towns of his own design, controlling every aspect of his fantasy world. Hmm, so let me get this straight, a man who creates things and lives in his own imagination, who controls every aspect of his fantasy world. Huh, that sounds exactly like Robert Zemeckis himself, kind of making this his most autobiographical movie. I just wish it was a better movie. Oh yeah, and did I mention there's motion capture in this one? Well, like I said, Bob seemed to really relate to this story, considering this comment that he said, which I'm gonna read right now. I realize that all this comes at a very high price. I won an Academy Award when I was 44 years old. I paid for it with my 20s. That decade of my life, from film school to 30, was nothing but work. Nothing but absolute driving work. I had no money. I had no life. I was just devouring movies and writing screenplays. Prior to Hollywood getting their hands on this movie Welcome to Marwin, there was a well-received documentary that actually shows the true story and is a small character-driven piece. So when I heard that Bobby Z was gonna take on this man's story, I thought to myself, oh wow, Robert Zemeckis is going to make a small, intimate, reality-based, character-driven, art house little film, maybe? But no, he somehow managed to turn this into this. <laughs> and I actually had no idea that in 2020, Robert Zemeckis directed The Witches. Yeah, I completely forgot about that one too. And when you compare this one to the practical effects of the 1990s, it just makes me appreciate practical effects even more. No offense, Mr. Computer. This filmmaker's most recent movie, Pinocchio, is the absolute worst reviewed movie of his career. It's been critically smashed to bits for about just every aspect of everything. Just like pretty much all of these other semi-live-action Disney reboots, Pinocchio 2022 completely disregards so much of what we expect from the characters. This stupid movie even goes out of its way to betray the core morals and lessons of the original. Things just seem to happen to Pinocchio instead of this boy making his own adventures happen. And they drink fucking root beer in this one. Good old Bob just simply isn't the Bob of the 80s and 90s. But I mean, like, who is, am I right? The passion for storytelling seems to have been lost, and his uncontrollable love for new technology has made him a different type of filmmaker. For better or worse. Worse. His energy and his drive, it used to be so strong but now it seems like it's being misused. Hey, it's time for another Robert Zemeckis quote. 
and I don't want my epitaph on my gravestone to read, he made a bunch of movies, or even, he made good movies. Well, it may read, he made good movies, until he didn't. He cared about advancing technology, until he forgot what audiences wanted. I don't think all that could even fit on a gravestone. All right, Scott. But you know what? I really don't give a f what anybody says. Robert Zemeckis is one of the few filmmakers out there who's willing to take chances and make mistakes and get messy. And his messy mistakes have helped everyone learn, thus furthering the art of cinema down the road of progress. Not everyone is brave enough to experiment with new technology. And just like with every art form or science, the first who try are very likely to crash and burn. And Robert Zemeckis is one of those risk-taking pioneers. He flew too close to that computer-generated sun, but he brought back some of that fire with him. And this has allowed others to continue the flight that began on the wings of Bobby Z. So nobody, not nobody, should give a f about what the f happened to Robert Zemeckis, because he's doing just fine. And that's not a lie. My, my nose, it didn't even grow that much. Oh, 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 no.